warm welcome to another episode of Nits and Nats podcast. I'm Hetvi Shah, your host, and today we are tackling a topic of profound significance: the intersection of diabetes and kidney-related diseases. With diabetes being a leading cause of kidney damage, understanding this connection is crucial for both prevention and management. And today we are thrilled to. have dr mohit naredi with us uh, who is a distinguished head of nephrology at pacific medical college in udaipur dr mohit brings a wealth of knowledge in nephrology and has a keen focus on diabetic kidney disease his expertise will help us navigate the complexities of how diabetes affects kidneys and what we can do to address these challenges so thank you dr mohit for joining us today Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all our listeners. Uh, so, doctor, to start with, um, you know, diabetic nephropathy is a common and serious complications of diabetes. So, uh, could you explain the pathophysiology behind how diabetes actually leads to such uh, kidney damage? Yeah, certainly. So, diabetes is uh, a newest epidemic in our country. and diabetic nephropathy is the most dreaded complication of this diabetes disease and uh, we all are afraid of diabetes just because of this single thing that it might lead to kidney failure which is a very bad thing to happen and it is very common why because diabetes is associated with hyperglycemia it is it uh, it signifies that blood sugars are high in your body and your body is not able to metabolize that blood sugar so the increased blood sugar leads to formation of advanced glycosylation end products which get deposited in uh, various tissues especially the blood vessels so wherever there are blood vessels there will be more effect of diabetes and the kidney is like a big filter where it filters the blood uh, into urine and the filters are made up of small blood vessels only so the advanced glycosylation end products get deposited into those blood vessels and they damage the kidney the filter the basic filter which starts to excretion of protein you know when uh, a protein is usually not present in urine when there is a leakage of protein from blood through the kidney into the urine it is called proteinuria and this proteinuria itself is a, a very bad thing to happen because it damages the kidney so once proteinuria starts it it sets a autopilot mode uh, disease going on and this uh, ultimately leads to damage to the kidney which can lead to kidney failure and uh, other complications of uh, kidney failure yes actually that thank you for that comprehensive explanation it is so crucial to understand the underlying yeah certainly it's very crucial so now moving on to early detection so we know that diagnosing diabetic kidney disease uh, early is essential so what are the key biomarkers and diagnostic tools that healthcare professionals should focus on especially considering the early detection so so in the early stage the most important thing about diabetes is uh, blood sugar control and when kidney part is concerned you know we have to focus on the protein as i said the protein in the urine so that is the uh, i guess the most easily available test in uh, uh, in our uh, in our country in our setup and uh, it's just a simple urine test which can show you the presence of protein in urine that is the simplest test and cheapest test available now coming to the earlier marker we can go for albuminuria estimation and that uh, that we can do by a microdepistic method or by 24 hour collection method and there are various other markers of kidney damage like in uh, various Uh, Kim one, NGAL, and these uh, some proteomics which help in identifying advanced glycosylation end products, and uh, there can be some uh, histopathological examination of the kidney also, but that is usually not required. And the earliest marker which is uh, clinically useful is urine protein test. The second test to come is creatinine serum creatinine estimation, which is a very easily available test, a simple blood test which shows the level of creatinine in your blood, and this creatinine is excreted by kidney. so whenever the level of creatinine goes up it shows that the kidneys are not working well so these two tests help us in determining the damage of kidney uh, by by diabetes or any other diseases 
and uh, the third thing which is more easily available even before the advent of these kidney tests is blood pressure so blood pressure if it is going up in a patient of diabetes then there has to be a strong suspicion of nephropathy in this patients whenever there is kidney damage in the patient of diabetes it will lead to increase in blood pressure and with blood pressure estimation can easily tell us so it is so easily available everybody can have it in their home the blood pressure monitor which is uh, easily available nowadays Yes, actually, that is that actually makes a significant difference. Also, doing like early detecting the disease would help uh, for the damage. Certainly, if everybody is aware about these problems, then they can handle their disease better. Now, as you mentioned, that blood pressure makes also makes a uh, plays a critical role in managing diabetic nephropathy. So, could you discuss how blood pressure management impacts these patients and? Uh, which anti uh, hypertensive agents show the most benefit yeah so blood pressure is the strongest predictor of mortality in the modern times the only indicator which if uh, controlled properly it can increase lifespan of population or oh, on the level of patients it is the most important thing i i tell my patients to monitor and uh, it's also very easily available very reliable and with the modern technology everybody is having a machine in their home and they can keep a record of their blood pressures over the years so blood pressure it, it, whenever the kidney damages the kidney is closely related with blood pressure kidneys are the organ which help in regulating blood pressure and they also bear the fruit of increased blood pressure the brunt of uh, increased blood pressure is borne by the kidney and they have got a, a very uh, complex intertwining and both are related to each other so the blood pressure control is as important to diabetic kidney disease patient as much as their sugar level are important sugar control and blood pressure control both are equally important and rather blood pressure control is more important than sugar control even it is so important so drugs are most important so after considering the lifestyle measures the cutting down on salt intake cutting down on processed food intake incorporating exercise in lifestyle and reducing stress these are four five lifestyle measures to reduce blood pressure in our patients and when they are doing these methods and still the blood pressure is not in control so we have to start them on medication pharmacotherapy so the most important part of medication in blood pressure control in diabetic patients or in kidney patients is the ace inhibitor or arb group that stops the ace the angiotensin converting enzyme uh, into acting on the blood vessels that increases the blood pressure this has also advantage that they help in protecting kidney from the damage of uh, uh, proteinuria they reduce proteinuria also they reduce aging in kidneys they reduce kidney damage and they help in protecting gfr to a certain extent that uh, it can increase it can delay uh, renal failure by few years so the acrb group are the strongest contender in uh, controlling blood pressure in diabetic patients Yes, thank you for highlighting these key anti uh, hypertensive. Now, diabetic kidney disease often comes with several comorbidities. So, what are the major comorbidities or complications that healthcare professionals should monitor, especially in patients with cardiovascular disease? That is also very common. Yeah, certainly. So, uh, the the usual scenario which our garden variety of diabetic patients are usually they are slightly overweight or maybe sometime morbidly obese they usually have a sedentary lifestyle and they have got huge stress piling up on them and they have multitude uh, very less uh, exercise or active uh, hours in their life so the common diseases which comorbidity which one need to take care of uh, in a patients with these this lifestyle the urban uh, the urban sedentary lifestyle is diabetes blood pressure heart disease dyslipidemias and renal disease so these five disease i would like to tell everybody to screen themselves for just simple blood sugar estimation blood pressure check up uh, renal function estimation by the help of a urine test a uh, uh, exercise stress test to search for a cardiac diseases ecg or and just a lipid profile test these are four five tests which one should always uh, take care and uh, ideally ideally everybody who is uh, having these things this kind of lifestyle they should undergo an annual physical check up with their doctor and whenever they find proteinuria or creatinine increase or blood pressure increase in patient with diabetes see diabetes and blood pressure both damage kidney and when they, they these two coexist they exist a synergistic effect they have got additive effect not even additive but multiplicative effect 
so they uh, they they all they both damage the kidney and when there was there's a kidney damage you should consult your nephrologist as early as possible yes actually that is actually a crucial aspect of managing now monitoring these comorbidities is also essential for comprehensive patient care right certainly this is not a one thing one time thing because diabetes is a illness for long and it's a lifelong uh, lifestyle issues so, so until the lifestyle is not taken care of we have to constantly monitor things like blood pressure blood sugar urine protein estimation and creatinine as well whenever uh, these all parameters are in control usually diabetic kidney diseases takes a, a slow we can slow the progression of it we cannot stop it we cannot reverse it but we can slow its uh, progression that is enough for us Yes, that is actually rightly said. Now, uh, f- finally, uh, looking to the future, uh, do you foresee any breakthroughs in regenerative medicine or gene therapies that could potentially change the trajectory of diabetic kidney disease? Yes, certainly. So that's a very good question. Uh, nowadays, with the advent of new technology and newer drugs, we are having so strong agents that. with these agents if they are started in time and they are given properly we can reduce the incidence of kidney failure due to diabetes by more than 40 to 50% with the help of these medicines very strong medicines we have first one we have already talked about this is the ace or arb inhibitors which also helps in controlling blood pressure and they help in proteinuria reduction the second medication the second group of medication is a, a new group called sglt2 inhibitors what they do is they they uh, help the kidney in uh, passing out sugars through the urine so they uh, they force the kidney to pass sugars into the urine they uh, they lead to glycosuria which is called glycosuria they induce glycosuria in this way they help the kidney lower the burden of glycosylation end products on the kidney the oxidative damage reduce and the fall of gfr is reduced as per just 40% 30 to 40% benefit is there the second the second group is uh, sglt2 inhibitor first group is ace inhibitor arb the third group is glp1 antagonist and uh, uh, these are also helpful in weight reduction nowadays we have got oral medicines which help in weight reduction and ultimately overall these medications also help in the uh, blood sugar control as well as uh, reducing the effect of diabetes on kidney and the fourth group is the newer non steroidal mineral corticoid receptor antagonist which is uh, the fenrenone which is the newer drug on the block and they all help in reducing the damage of uh, the advanced glycosylation end products and the ace group the ras the renin angiotensin system on the kidney and they help us protect the kidney so with the uh, if all four medications are given and in, in the, in it's the the sugars and blood pressure are well controlled the patient is managed properly perfectly so uh, as much as 50 to 60% of the renal failure due to diabetes can be prevented so uh, right but now also one more question is with the rise of ai and technologies what role do you think that ai will play in uh, kidney diseases and along with diabetes yeah so with the advent of these ai based things uh, it's very easy for patients to control their blood sugar the blood pressure their medications and their everything it's also helpful for doctors to manage the patient's data and they can keep a track of his all records he can they can uh, keep a track of patient's records and the ai will itself tell the patient that you are going on the right track or not with the help of ai based uh, monitoring things patients can track their own diet their own calorie intake sometimes patients are not aware what to eat what not to eat and sometimes despite being aware uh, there can be confusion in one or two things so ai can help them in guiding accurate diet accurate uh, monitoring of blood pressure accurate uh, the control of their body weight the medication timings their uh, the the uh, ill effects of their medications uh, and you know to follow up with doctors the these the ai era is simply wonderful Yes, that is rightly mentioned. I think we all are excited about the what we yes. are, how it is the future of health. So now, as we uh, wrap up today's uh, session, thank you so much for sharing the insights, Dr. Mohit. And let me tell you that your expertise has provided us with, provided us with invaluable information on diabetes and kidney related. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, and thank you, Matt Sinha, for providing me with this opportunity. 
and uh, thank you listeners and uh, i would uh, like to all of you to increase awareness about diabetes blood pressure and kidney diseases and i would wish all my listeners uh, with a better health and long life thank you so much thank you thank you again doctor and to our listeners thank you for joining us into this episode of medsciners podcast and remember if you're a healthcare professional who's eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions do not hesitate to join us on medsciners platform and sanas platform is not just a resource it's a dynamic space where you can connect with the medical peers participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare so until next time take care and stay healthy